And this problem is not just in Brazil. For more on homelessness around the world, I spoke with Larry English. He's the chief executive for Real, Real Equity for All. It's a UK-based organization dedicated to improving living conditions and providing services for people living in slums. English himself started his work after noticing the problem in his native South Africa. I grew up in a country where 80% uh, of the population were disenfranchised, didn't have any access to, uh, under apartheid, didn't uh, have access to land, and I'm an architect and urban planner by training. So for me, it was very obvious that on my doorstep we had people that didn't have access to the city, didn't have access to land, didn't have access to housing. Uh, obviously, uh, the world is, has now, is now urbanized and, and people need to live close to, to, to work and, and, uh, and places that are and, and need to live where, where they can um, access jobs and, and other opportunities, other amenities in the city. And obviously those spaces uh, are contested. What is your organization doing uh, to help alleviate some of these problems? Well, the first thing is that um, sometimes if, and we work in Africa and Asia, and uh, you know, anything between 35 to 70 percent of, of, of um, citizens of a city uh, often live in slums or, or, in, or informal settlements. And so they're a huge number. And it's very important that they they work together so that they federate, uh, that they begin to realize that they do have uh, a voice. And so it's very important that um, slum, uh, slum dwellers or informal settlers of cities or unrecognized people do begin to work together as groups and communities. And so one of the things that we do is to, to foster the formation of community groups, to, to mobilize community groups. But then, obviously, what we look at is not just mobilizing the groups, but then looking at ways of how you equip them institutionally to begin to um, access um, uh, finance uh, to, 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 to move from sort of mobilizing and advocacy to actual become, to, to, to building houses. We, we build institutions. We work with independent organizations in countries, and that's important because every country has uh, different uh, politics, different regulations, different cultures, and people need to, and every time, you know, in each context, housing, uh, the solution to housing or housing the unhoused is, is unique. And so you need people in a country to bring um, those ingredients together in a, in a solution that will be sustainable. If you had three suggestions or tips for cities dealing with this homelessness problem, what would those three tips be? I would say one of them is to begin to treat housing as a public good, uh, as in, like you would infrastructure. So we don't ever think of providing roads and then, um, uh, and we, we regard roads as a public uh, good and, and in piece of infrastructure because it makes cities more functional. And so providing uh, roads and highways and, and, and transit systems is regarded as a good. I think we need to see housing in the same way. Um, I would think that uh, housing, rental housing is very important because housing needs to be, the people who live in a city and work in a city need to have access to the city and therefore need to live in the city. But obviously finance. I think the governments, uh, uh, people, you can't build housing, uh, you can't compete, you can't make pay for itself. So there's got to be some subsidy element. But if you start to see housing as a public good, then, then uh, investing in rental housing in cities means some, that's something that could actually be retained.